Good morning. You're listening to Spectrum on 105.9 WJZW Woodbridge, Washington, WBZS Alexandria, Washington, and WZHF Arlington, Washington. I'm Thomas Grooms, and joining us in the studio this morning, a very rare treat. Members of Quicksilver Messenger Service are with us. Gary Duncan, the founding member of Quicksilver. Also with us, Michael Lewis and Keith Kilgo, founding member of the Blackbirds. All in the studio this morning. They've been very busy this week for the Washington Area Music Association and the 11th Annual Whammies. Gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to Spectrum. How you doing? Gary, good morning. Hi there, Tom. Michael? <laughs> good morning, uh, Mr. Grooms. No, so I'm trying to get my DJ voice. To <laughs> what time of morning is it, by the way? It's uh, a little bit after 6 o'clock. Wow. Uh, okay, that really? explains it. But where God, you no live, wonder, it's 3 o'clock. No wonder I feel so weird. <laughs> yeah, well, in California, it's only it's a little after 3, so it's about time for lunch. <laughs> is it really after 6? Well, well, I can't you, do that. I've got to go home. My mom's going to well, get Well, no, mad. no, we we're, we're, we're have that time, <laughs> ability to shift me, time. She finds out. Moment. She will. As you know, this week has been very busy. We had the uh, 11th Annual Whammies and the Legacy of Washington Music, the theme. You guys put together a super group, and you played at the Birchmere um, during the week. Keith was doing percussion with you, members of Link Razel Band with you, John Van Horn and Rich Mitchell. How was that project? Uh, it was fun. It was It was kind of a last minute thing that we all sort of did and just had faith but we had fun i mean if you're having fun and you got faith and it's cool you know it'll be all right no yeah, it was great man i got to meet some new players i mean flying all the way across the country to play with with musicians that you've never met one night before the show that's uh, hey, that's living a, dangerous, baby. Well, that's interesting, man. That's yeah. what they call yeah. pushing the envelope. But Keith, you, know? you guys did you guys did a real good job of uh Hanging in there. Yeah, yeah and, I, and I heard you singing back yeah. there. Hey, I was, yeah. yes. I was, turn up my monitor. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fun. I mean, we just, uh, yeah. just felt you guys, man, and just went with what it was, you know. You know Keith is definitely a, a talent. I mean, I see him throughout the year playing with every configuration of band you can imagine. Guys, just get off the plane. Keith's right there, ready to back him up. He's incredible, and as you know, he's walking in rhythm all the time. Wow. <laughs> I saw that right away. <laughs> we, of course, have been stressing the Washington music scene. I was asking Gary and Michael, you know, the difference in California and the difference here. But do you see a definite scene, Keith? I mean, you're part of this scene here, and you travel around the world, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the the quality of musicianship uh, all over the place has, has risen. I mean, there, there's... So, you know, guys can come from the West Coast and come here and, like, you know, we had one rehearsal, man. I mean, you know, it's like, okay, hey, here we go. One, two, three, boom. We hit it, made it happen, you know, or tried to make it happen. Uh, I, I think that's uh, kind of universal at this point. You guys have always had a good jazz scene here, too. Mm -hmm. From what I remember, every time I've ever been here, and I know in the summer, like, I mean, you guys, it's really nice to see that in the city. And in L.A., we have some, but not... I don't think as much. Yeah. yeah, the jazz scene in San Francisco is beginning to suffer because the only yeah. jazz station there, I think, has gone. Mm. There's a sort of a jazz, but it's not. This was a regular hardcore, just yeah. K, K jazz, K J A Z. Uh -huh. They've been there for right. years and years, and they finally, I think, they they're gone. So you don't get to hear any of the old jazz. Yeah. You hear all the new stuff, you know. But that's good. It was uh, there was a club, uh, the Baked Potato. Yeah, that's still around. It's still uh, happening. But yeah. now the, the main one now is in Pasadena. It's wow, kind of so. shifted. Okay, because you know, we used to go there and there. jam. I mean, it, you know, you uh, anybody. Yeah. Leave we it have one, too. Uh, the Catalina Bar and Grill down in Hollywood is really nice. It's still now. happening. Okay. That's, that's, that's pretty good. And, and there, are, there are a few. Okay. There are a few places. Yeah. Yeah. I saw Rex Dark in there. Yeah. Now, you gentlemen um, are talking about the jazz scene overall. Gary was yeah. part of a band. That started in in the mid 1960s. The Quicksilver Messenger Service. The word improvisation is synonymous with that band. He was a pioneer. He definitely was doing what the Grateful Dead imitated later on, and now have made a lot of money off of. And um, Gary was right there at the beginning. He played the Fillmore. He played with a variety of jazz mm -hmm. artists. He used to have bills with Miles Davis and who else, Gary? I mean, you never know who Bill Graham would put on the bill. Uh, we played with some incredibly good players, and it was embarrassing. <laughs> really, because we, we were at nowhere near the caliber of these guys, and they were opening for us. In fact, early on when we first started, we did a show 
at the Apollo Theater in New York, and we headlined over James Brown, Ike and Tina Turner, <laughs> and the Jazz Messengers. Our Blakey. Mm -hmm. wow. we, we were the headliners, and these guys played, and I was standing back there going, oh, man, what are we going to do? <laughs> and so we decided that we'd just go in and just turn up real loud. <laughs> and we cranked up real loud, and they just all went crazy and started jumping up and down. And That's I, all right. But that was, that was, no, we played with, uh, well, Graham had tons of jazz acts coming through all the time. So we got, for a while there, we got really lucky to get to see a lot of people come through town and play, you know, that you would have never seen in your life, you know, if, you, if it hadn't been for that. So mm. it was a good scene there while it lasted. You know, Keith, I was talking about Quicksilver Messenger Service and the legacy that Duncan and Lewis have here. When he first released his record, they did Bo Diddley's, you know, Who Do You Love? Mm -hmm. and gave him credit for the song back in the 60s, which mm. was very unusual back when that time period was going on because people were just copping songs and not giving credit. Mm -hmm. But Bo Diddley lived here in Washington for a while, didn't he? Well, yeah. Um, I talked to him about Gary and he thought very highly of Gary for uh, for doing Who Do You Love and, and giving him credit. That's great. I, 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 I never met him, but um, certainly know his music and, uh, and, and, and his groove. We ran into him on the road a lot, Bo. Bo, yeah. Yeah, he once he came up to me and he hugged me. Hmm. He said, "Thanks for doing my song." He says, "I'm making so much money off you guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> happy." Yeah, and he was nice. That's I like old Bo. Yeah, in fact, man. I he, when he was back when he was young in his heyday when mm -hmm. he had his band, it was impressive. I saw him once in L.A. with he had five women with four maracas in each hand, mm. just shaking them with these tight red dresses on. Mm. Made a believer out of me, boy. I hear that. It's <laughs> 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 a good thing. What about you, Michael? Your jazz background, what does that entail? Uh, well, um, I've written a few jazz pieces. Uh, I produced five albums on David Benoit uh, back in the uh, late 70s. And uh, I've always been a big fan of uh, jazz, especially bebop. And uh, keyboard-wise, Oscar Peterson and uh, Monk. Monk's one of my yes, favorites, sir. too. And Bud Powell. So, uh, and I like uh, some of the stuff, some of the uh, R&B people that have moved over to jazz, like Chaka, you know, like, it's nice, nice to hear. I was thinking maybe we ought to do a Monk tune on our next record. That would be, that do would a, be nice. Do something yeah. like crisscross yeah. with electric guitars yeah that'd be strange and keith you've been here in washington i mean on and off for the past three decades and mm -hmm. you've watched the music scene up close you had uh, a lot of success with the blackbirds now you have your own cd out which is is fairly new mood for love mm -hmm. and you're still hanging in there yeah still hanging i mean there there's a lot of talent here in washington uh uh arrangers Vocalists, uh, percussionists, you know, uh, keyboard players. A lot of people come through here. I mean, just to think back, uh, Donny Hathaway used to play at a club called the Talleyrand, which was, um, uh, which is now this is called the Duke Ellington B Street Bridge, but it was the Calvert Street Bridge in that in those days. Uh, he played uh, every night. You could go see uh, Donny Hathaway play and sing. Uh, uh, John Malachi, you know. Uh, legendary pianist uh, yeah. a lot of people you yeah. know uh came from here uh, of course you know shirley horn and buck hill and you know keita betts and you know veterans that are that are still here and are still with us uh so you know a lot of music out, out of dc and, yeah aren't the uh the coast coasters aren't they based out of this area too or something clovers clovers yeah clovers. Don't, uh, don't, don't bill don't. harris I don't, thought the coasters too. Don't Carl forget Gardner, Roy. Is that or maybe, are they New York? I was thinking they were right in the D.C. Yeah, it's Clovers, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bill Harris, uh, guitar player. He was a uh, member of that uh, band. His son is a bass player. Joe Harris used yeah. to play with yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Ray Charles and uh, Temptations. Sure, the Orioles, who were on John Van Horn's uh, CD, mm -hmm. uh, were just inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh huh. Right. But uh, you guys have definitely been full circle and still turning and and you know smoking them out as we go. I mean, 
your performance at the Birchmere was fantastic. Just to see Keith get up there, a Washingtonian, and mesh with you and, and play. <laughs> and incidentally, I mentioned Keith's CD, Mood for Love, but you guys have something out called Shapeshifter, Quicksilver 96. You want to talk about this project? Sure. What went into it? Uh, well, you asked me that once, I think. Uh, a lot of work. A lot of fun. Well, you should have the right answer. <laughs> right, this time I had the right answer. A lot of work. This should go easy for you, Gary. Right, I, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of fun. A lot of time. A lot of things I can't discuss <laughs> on here, but we all know what I'm talking about. And it, no, it was actually for us, it was fun because we got to do yeah. just what we wanted. And, you know, we got to use good players yeah. when we needed to bring somebody in to do a, a, a part. You know, they were there. Norbert Stachel on sax is like, you know, he's wonderful. And he's one of those guys that basically undiscovered. He, he worked with Sheila E. and Prince and a lot of other people. But, you know, just as a musician himself, he's great and easy to work with. And it was an easy project. I mean, it was hard. And, in fact, that we were, you know, we spent a lot of time and this and that on it. But as far as the musical part of it, it was all easy. It was fun, you know. And yeah. <laughs> Odds and ends from about three yeah. or four years of recording in a couple of different studios. Yeah, we recorded in a few different studios with some different players, and that's the, we ended up with a, oh, more than two CDs worth of material, but that's all we could get on there, so we saved a few for later. But it's from different sessions, about probably three different s Over about of, a three-year three yeah, period, Yeah, about basically. three different bunches of basics. If you uh -huh. listen to it, you can hear the difference. Yeah. I you can, anyway. It, it it was nice to be able to uh, record using some of the new digital technology too. We were able mm -hmm. like some of the segues and and sounds and fidelity that we were able to get was uh, it was fun to experiment. Each song was kind of its own little element. Yeah, and we and we weren't under somebody's thumb, you know, to put out like a, a pop record. So we got yeah. to do you know mm -hmm. just about anything we wanted, which is uh, we're lucky. Well, Gary, creativity has always been the utmost uh, on your mind. I mean, from thinking back to the early 60s, even thinking to the uh, Monterey Pop Festival when you guys played with you, Masekela, Jimi <laughs> Hendrix. Keith's <laughs> very impressed that you played with Jimi. Yes, oh, I am. Listen, man, uh, that was... Uh, people James have asked Marshall. Me, uh, yeah, people ask me a lot about, you know, festivals and what was your favorite show and what was the... Gr and I have to say that that show mm. was, the, was it, like... I don't know how to describe it. It was just one of those things that happens and never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. It was the first one that I remember, and they just it just all came together right, you know. And like, to and there was one point where the facility was beautiful, and backstage they had a whole area of little restaurants and places to stroll. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get something to eat, and I was eating a hot dog, and I looked across, and I was, here's Otis Redding, Jimi Hendrix, Ike and Tina Turner. I mean. All of these people sitting in here like a school commissary, eating, hmm, eating mm -hmm. talking, and I, you know, just time sort of stopped, and I wow. went, "Look at where I am, man! Look <laughs> at all these people that are here." Yeah. You know? And a lot of them, most of them, aren't here now, you know. But it was just, and the high point of the whole thing was uh, Ravi Shankar. Huh? When he played, uh, it was the last on the last day. Oh yeah. He's Everybody fine. just stopped in their tracks. Everywhere they could hear the music, and they just stood still for the whole set. Hmm. People were standing with tears coming down their face. It was just beautiful, mm -hmm. you know. And then, of course, Hendrix burned his guitar. I was standing <laughs> about five feet away watching him do that. And went, what? Man, he's wrecking that guitar, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then after uh, after the show, we had a big jam session over in this little Quonset hut. Hendrix and me and uh, Yorma Kalkinen and uh, Steve Cropper and Duck Dunn and I mean all of these you know just great players man we played on for six seven hours you know mm. and uh, uh, that's a bit high point in my life actually I'm that was my best gig that I remember except for the yeah. other night at the Birchmere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well I mean, spoken hey you know, see, I, I got, see uh, he was getting it in there buddy <laughs> i know that's the politics baby <laughs> where was that again gary <laughs> the birch mirror uh, linda thanks you be uh, there we love her. <laughs> you're listening to spectrum on 105.9 wjcw woodbridge washington wbzs and wzhf we're honored this morning our guest michael lewis from quicksilver messenger service gary duncan founding member of quicksilver and our good buddy Keith Kilgo, founding member and percussionist extraordinaire from the Blackbirds, in the studio with us. 
and uh, we're talking about uh, what they're up to here in 1996-97. Now, I'm sure, Michael, you uh, get this question posed a lot. Um, you break away from working with Gary periodically. Mm -hmm. You work yeah. on other projects. You produce TV shows. Yeah. You did Barbara Walters' theme song. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've, well, I did the In Search Of series uh, that uh, Leonard Nimoy was the host of. That was my first TV project. That ended up running for about six years. And then uh, I did uh, a Barbara Walters' specials theme that ran for 13 seasons. And uh, then I've done background music for, uh, let's see, that those amazing animals, that's incredible. I've got a cue on The Price is Right. And I uh, did a Super Bowl pregame theme, stuff like that. It, yeah, it's fun, fun things, a lot of different projects um, that are fun besides just the rock and the R&B thing, you know. You'd never know it to look at them, would you? No, huh. I, I'm interested to know when you work on a project such as that, Yeah. Um, does that take away from your creativity as far as writing a song musically because you have such a time frame to, to write no, a jingle well, or something? Well, two things. Like, for, First of all, when, when you're writing that kind of thing, um, you're, you can do any style that you want. It's like, you know, you have a lot of freedom there. So, so I'm not limited to a certain uh, style of music per particular, right? But the one thing that is different is the pressure because you do always have a time limit. And you, okay, you got to deliver this in 10 days or two weeks or or whatever so but it's kind of, it's kind of uh, fun that way it puts a puts a little edge to it but. well there's also the challenge of having to fit a piece of music in a certain number of seconds yeah. but you know yeah. now with all this computer uh programming what you can do you can have a cue and if it's off by a few seconds you can just uh compress it or expand it you know you can fit now but up, up until maybe five years ago it was a lot harder you had to really the timing had to be dead on but it's kind of it's it's fun that way, and it's nice it's nice to uh, be able to to go stretch out in different kinds of styles too, and have the freedom to do that. So. You get to write short pieces. Yeah, which is cool because before I mean you'd have to write a piece that was at least long enough to go on a record as a record. Yeah. But if you can just if just a little tiny piece and all by itself, it's like a haiku painting, you know, just a little yeah. mood. Yeah, I, I did a, a string of martial arts films. Uh, and uh, uh, produced uh, a lot of disco records, created fictitious groups, and uh, produced the first few albums on David Benoit. We found him, and uh, he was playing with a, a tenor player, a guy from Canada, and uh, talked a small label into to put doing an album on him and help you know get him going there, and. Uh, yeah, various things. I'm even playing in a country band too at the moment. Like, it's nice to be doing a lot of different styles. You also worked on the uh, TV series Cops, didn't you? Uh huh. I do all the all the uh, background music, all the stuff in that. And I was just going to tell you an interesting story. Uh, Keith mm -hmm. Blackbirds, right? Uh, my session player for for from like around 1975 up until around 81. That mm -hmm. played on all my disco and R&B records was David Williams right. who worked with you. Right, exactly. Right, And we've only met tonight, so they're one of those small world musician <laughs> things, you know. Yeah. And he was what, your original bass player? Yeah, well, we, our first album uh, was split up between Dave Williams and uh, Joe Hall. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, David and I, gosh, we've been buddies for a long time. I, I stayed with him in New York for a while and then... Yeah. After he left the Black Birds, he went on to play with Cedar Walton, and he's, uh -huh. he's cut several CDs on his own. And uh, yeah, he's one of my, my fav bass favorite player. bass players. He's so good on on the fretless and upright, and yeah. and, and Fender too. I mean, he's yeah. really very versatile. Yeah, he's a wonderful guy. Yeah. Hey man, you know your your song for years was one of my uh, little tricks. Your song, "Walking in Rhythm," uh -huh. and "Tighten Up." Remember "Tighten Up." Mm -hmm. You can be going, what are we playing here? And you go, well, let's see, man. Play, you either, either be play tighten up slower or play walking in rhythm uh, <laughs> a little bit faster. <laughs> you know? It was like one of the, it was like a preset. We go, it's either walking in rhythm or tighten up. It's got to be one of the two. That's, uh, well, that's gentlemen, good. why don't we uh, play walking in rhythm and a tune off the yeah. new Quicksilver CD called Close Enough for Jazz? All right. That'd be fine. Go ahead and do that. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, and on, uh, close enough for jazz. One thing that's kind of interesting is the vocal processing on that, with the with the with the way the harmonies move. 
and that's kind of was fun to do. Here's uh, the Blackbirds first, the Black walking Birds. in rhythm. Is there any story behind this tune, uh, Keith? Uh, well, uh, the guy who wrote it, Barney Perry from uh, Buffalo, New York, where your car rusts after six months, and uh, <laughs> I've known him. He was a buddy. We were, you know, I haven't seen Barney. God knows in twenty years, but uh, uh, it was some story in his life. You know, he he did something with that, and uh, we just kind of fell in there and uh, did it with him. Well, here's the Blackbirds on Smooth Jazz 105.9. You're listening to Spectrum on 105.9 WJZW, Woodbridge, Washington, WBCS, Alexandria, Washington, and WZHF, Arlington, Washington. We just heard from Quicksilver, from Shapeshifter, Quicksilver 96, Gary Duncan and Michael Lewis is latest, along with uh, Greg Arico, and Close Enough for Jazz, and also the Blackbirds, uh, going back a ways, walking in rhythm. As we mentioned, this CD is out and available, isn't it, Gary, Shapeshifter? Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's kind of like a limited store is right at the moment. The distribution is just starting to get going on it. But I, I think it's in this area in several places. Uh, it's in Tower Records. and uh, It's happening. It's there. You can buy it. If you really, really want it bad enough, you can find it. Mm -hmm. And if you want, I'll just call me up. I'll mail one to you. <laughs> Gary, you and Keith also have something else in common. And as well as Michael, you have worked on movie soundtracks. You were on the the movie Revolution with Steve Miller many years ago. Oh, yeah, but that wasn't really like doing a soundtrack, I'm not like Michael does. Michael scores the film. You know, I mean, they just recorded a song of us and just stuck it in a movie, so I don't qualify there. I mean, not as a real official dude like Lewis. <laughs> yeah, he scores films. I can't... I, I, we'll put that. You can say that about sure. me. Sure, I score Still. films. Sure. Hey. And yeah. Keith has done a movie, right, Keith? Yeah, uh, Cornbread, Earl and Me... Uh, uh, Bernie Casey, uh, Rosalind Cash, Moses Gunn, uh, uh, Jamal Wilkes uh, from the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, uh, we actually, we did the whole soundtrack and then they, uh, a guy named Mitch Farber did the kind of arrangement or in between the, the love scene and the carnival scene. He underscored. Yeah, he underscored. And we, we I sang the theme, uh, Cornbread, you know, and uh, it was really nice. I, I enjoyed it. It was long. but it's Did you feel pressured as far as having to come up with product for a movie, more so than, say, making a record? No, actually, it, it was on them. Uh, we only had, like, you know, two- and three-minute cuts. You know, they had to stretch them out to make it into a record which uh, was a lot of looping, and at that point, you couldn't do the digital thing that you can do now, but uh, you could, uh, you know, say, hey, where's the tape and the scissors? Let's go. And they kind of splice it all together. But it it was a good, exp you know, a wonderful experience watching them put the uh, soundtracks to the actual movie because we really didn't see the movie until uh, we, we finished the music. We did the music, and they said, okay, this scene goes here, this goes here, this goes here, blah, blah. Uh, and so that that made it very interesting. I that'd be interesting to write a bunch of m music and give it to somebody and have them put it yeah. in the movie and see where they used it. I, yeah, so I've got just, a buddy. Uh, d different kind of moods. Is yeah, that did? yeah. That does. Uh, his name is Terry Plumeri. He used to he was a bassist. He used to play with uh, Roberta Flack. Uh, I mean, he's actually done an enormous amount of movies. I mean, um, more than you would think, more than I would think. Uh, and so I, when I hook up with him, he lives out in L.A. I'm, Hook up with him and uh, see if I can get something going with that. I'd love yeah. to continue that. That, that yeah, was, that they're, was fun. they're fun. They're fun. You should dig up Wawa Watson while you're at it. Oh, I, dig Wawa you, you know, I you know Wawa? Yeah, he played on a I lot of my records, very man. Well, very well. He used to drive a Lincoln yeah. Continental, man, but I, it's two city blocks long. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, I just, uh, re recently uh, I was involved in Elder Barge's last two albums and uh, did mm -hmm. some programming for him and. And uh, Wawa, he loved Wawa style. So that was his thing. Wawa man. would come in, and the and the piano player from Marvin Gaye's band uh, was one of the main writers too. I can't think mm. of his name at the moment, but they they would come in together. Mm -hmm. I know Duncan's over there, really anxious to play some Marvin Gaye because he's a, a yeah. DC boy, and so is Gary at heart. So we'll do that. What did you want to play, Gary, by Marvin Gaye? Oh, uh, let's see what have I got on my list here. What's going on? What's going on? That's what I want to play. What's going on? Smooth Jazz 105.9. 
You're listening to Spectrum with us this morning, Michael Lewis and Gary Duncan from Quicksilver Messenger Service. Keith Kilgo is with us also, a former founding member of the Blackbirds, and we're talking about what a week it's been, the 11th <laughs> annual uh, whammies here in Washington, and the theme, of course, the legacy and tradition of Washington music. And we definitely have one here that we can be very proud of. And as I said earlier, um, seeing Keith get up there and play with you guys with really no notice extemporaneously. He's a as a as a as a listener, as someone just observing the show. Well, and that's just one that's one just one face of Keith because he also is like a keyboard player and other stuff and you know, vocals and everything. So we just saw him in kind of one oh, he's you know, got one, the of, chops, one of his hats no doubt, tonight. Man. He's you know? a multifaceted yeah. man. But you know, life in the nineties too, you kinda gotta be flexible hey. like that, you know, it's not, not like it used to be. Nine jobs, sense, man. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well yeah. unbeknownst to Keith, I have turned off Gary's and Michael's headphones and they can't hear us talking about them. How did you like playing with those guys, those hippies tonight? I mean, it was beautiful. Uh just checking out the music, uh, I loved the lyrics. Right? When you when you sent me the CD, I was like, oh, okay, this, yeah, you know, and I just felt it. You know, I think music is a feeling thing. I mean, you can bring the music, you can write it out, you can, yeah, but if you don't feel it, I don't care what you do. It, there's no groove, and that was the first thing he said. The first thing came out of his mouth, like, okay, man, no matter what, just just find a groove here, right. and we can make this thing work. Yeah. And, and and that's the bottom line is that there was a groove, there was a lock, you know, and uh, we just kind of fell in there. You uh, you had no qualms about it at all. You were ready to go. You were the first one out of the up on the stage. Ready to go, man. Yeah. Playing those conga drums. My hands are probably three or four sizes larger now, but <laughs> <laughs> I still enjoy. And that's that's a, the old school thing of too of of listening. You know, like uh, a lot of the younger groups, it seems like there's not as much of that, but it's that, that thing of just tuning in and you know. Listen to the other cats playing and and have a good time and groove. Yeah. It's great when it's so good that yeah. you don't want to play anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you listen to it, and you go, "Boy, that's so good." If I put anything in there, I just wreck it. So I'm not going to play anything. <laughs> Gary, your credentials definitely speak for themselves. I mean, just the the time that you've been around, the people you've played with, you helped mold Santana's career basically in his guitar playing, didn't you? I did. Well, maybe I did. I, I well, when guess. I went out to California, everyone said, you know how Santana holds the notes? That guy Duncan over there taught him how to do that. Well, yeah, I always heard yeah. that too, Gary. I always heard well, that. Well, you know, back, you know, see, there was two, basically kind of like two generation levels of bands. It's when the Santana and the, uh, some of the other groups were like the next generation after us in a way. We were like the older guys, maybe a few years than they were. Mm -hmm. And I remember they were in the Santana Blues Band, and they just played straight, pretty much straight blues. It was a little bit Latin, but... No, I showed Carlos how to play a, a minor scale with a ninth on the top mm. one night at the Fillmore. He goes, how do you play that, man? I said, well, it's, it's this note, start on the ninth instead of, you know, just play around that. And So he's, he incorporated that into his plan, uh, but that's what everybody does, that. I mean, I don't know if I shaped his career, but I mean... No, but when you play around other players a lot, you pick up other people's licks, yeah, and yeah. that's the way music yeah. is. Nobody ever mean. comes up with anything original. It's all you know. It all came from Bach. Yeah, I think. yeah. Said, <laughs> Bach whatever influences that you have to blend. Michael, I know the story how you joined Quicksilver Messenger Service, but it's very interesting in the shoes that you had to fill. Yeah. That was quite a task that not just anybody could do. We've mentioned Nicky Hopkins many times on right. the air in his session right. playing with the Stones, the Beatles. And the list yeah. goes on and on. When I was a kid, and uh, before I uh, moved back out to California, Nicky was one of my my favorite. Uh, as far as the the uh, rock and roll scene that was happening at that time, I, I grew up in the R and B scene more. But then the rock and roll came out, and Nicky's playing was like he was my favorite piano player of that that whole kind of thing, you know. And and uh, in fact, a blues solo that he did on a Jeff Beck album. Uh, on the Truth album, that Blues Deluxe, I still think is one of the greatest overall blues piano solos. You know, he was just very tasty. He was a great uh, player. I yeah. mean, I used to just like to sit down with Nicky in a room. He was—he had that Roadhouse piano. Yeah, he could thing, play. You know, anything. Just, I mean, you go, Nicky. Yeah. You remember the intro to you he, Huey <laughs> Piano Smith and the Clowns? I said, Nicky, you remember the intro to Don't You Just Know It? He says, Oh yeah. And yeah, there he'd roll it out. Wrote, he knew yeah. all of this stuff. Mm. He's like a machine, man. Yeah. You know? And a real, real sweet guy, too, you know. Yeah. I miss him. Yeah. If you're out there, Nikki, we miss you, boy. 
we did a special show for him a couple of years ago, remember? Mm-hmm. So that was very, very fond memory. You're listening to Spectrum with us this morning, members of Quicksilver Messenger Service, Gary Duncan and Michael Lewis, also in the studio, Keith Kilgo from the Blackbirds. Now, Keith, the Blackbirds are always associated with Howard University. Mm-hmm. Um, why is that? Well, that's that's where we started. That's where Donald Bird, he was the uh, jazz studies uh, professor at that point, and he was recruiting, you know, a band. Uh, he used some... Uh, you know, professional seasoned musicians at first uh billy harper and uh, roland wilson and uh, joe chambers and he mixed in a couple of students with that and then after that point he, he decided that he'd try a whole band uh, of students and so we basically played weekends you know we would do like new york brooklyn uh, the east uh, we'd go to detroit the burning spear and <laughs> many many kind of you know, small clubs in, in, in that way, and come back and go to school. And, and the whole premise uh, was to bridge academia with the real world. And uh, uh, we would study music, you know, during the week, and then we'd go on the weekends and play. And uh, it was it was very interesting and uh, uh, very hard. <laughs> As you uh, know, Keith, Gary's band is comprised of some really, really fine seasoned talented musicians out there in california yeah. he has greg rico doing drums uh-huh and you had told me that's your man sly and the family stone yeah. babe yeah. i know him, the drill they call him hand feet there it is that's in the hand feet <laughs> yeah no how did you get greg to join oh i didn't really get him to he just sort of, i don't know things happened we had a benefit to play remember when they had that big earthquake out there and all the freeways mm -hmm. fell down well they had a benefit for uh earthquake victims and it was one of those last minute throw together a band like you know he just kind of wandered in off he the just street. wandered in there he looked, he looked hungry thing. he looked hungry and <laughs> wet. He looked hungry and there kinda was like a drum Keith. set there yeah, right we there was a, a drum set there that he got some sticks and he said yeah and, you we know, gave him a snickers bar and, and, and that's that's that's, that's history, history. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then we couldn't get him to leave yeah, right. him, he's right. still there he's waiting for us to get <laughs> right. back don't feed the cat yeah great greg's a great guy very mellow just real uh you know? He's a real good drummer. He's, I mean, he's yeah. a, oh, he's, man. he's yeah. he's real. Not only does he play funk, but he's real flexible. I mean, it's I play a lot of acoustic guitar, and it's hard for a trap drummer to play around acoustic guitar without stepping on it. You know, but mm -hmm. he knows how to do it, and he's a good boy too. We miss you, Greg. We wish you was here. <laughs> I'd polish that little old bald head up. Sound, you know? <laughs> and you could dance to the music. You'd be dancing yeah, to the music. It is. And walking in rhythm. Yeah. What's ahead for Quicksilver? Oh, well, we've got a CD out, and we're playing some shows, and uh, we're going to Florida here on Saturday to play with uh, this group called the, the Crawfish of Love yeah. out in the middle of the swamp. <laughs> we're going to play in the middle of the swamp. And then we're going to start a, a chain of uh, night golf places night around, golf. around the country. Mm -hmm. Night, night yeah. miniature golf. Quicksilver night golf. There it is. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And uh, then yeah. we're going to go over to Europe and do some playing over there. And we're going to go to Japan. And we're going to go to Guam. And we're going to go to Hawaii. And then we're never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Keith? What's ahead for you besides uh, Mood for Love? Yeah, well, uh, new CD out. Going to do that. Uh, uh, Europe is uh, probably May, June, somewhere, 97. Um, got a friend that uh, lives in uh, Taipei. A uh, guitar player from Baltimore, O'Donnell Levy. So we're going to go visit him and uh, just, you know, a variety of things. Just going to mix it up. I'm going to be doing some, you know, some stuff. Uh, I've been talking with Joe Henderson and different different people. So uh, going to be busy 97. That sounds great. Tom, Tom, I got to say one thing. I want to thank you and Ron Gordon for all, all you, what you've done for Gary and I since we've been in town and everything. Yeah. And you guys just... Uh, been super and uh fantastic i don't know if we've had a chance to tell you that yet but i want you to know that man that we love you tom yeah, yeah man. it was really i love you thanks tom. thanks for all <laughs> yeah. all your effort and both you guys see, we got to see the water in dc's ron gordon's always behind the scenes so right. yeah. oh definitely yeah. ron is the man we uh, saw the washington yeah. monument and great, it's made man. out of legos yeah it is i swear it's what it looks like to me let's yeah. go check it tomorrow just check it i mean they think they switched on you in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, I guess, you know, before you split, i got to mention that when I did come out to visit Gary, he would jump on that piano and he'd do uh, Bobby Caldwell's What You Won't Do for Love. Oh, a great song. 
I can play it on the piano. I'd love to play that. Set that up, Gary. Hi, uh, this is Gary Duncan, and we're going to be listening to Bobby Caldwell, What You Won't Do for Love on Smooth Jazz, 105.9 FM. Hi, this is Keith Kilgo, and when I'm in D.C., I listen to WJZW, 105.9 FM, Smooth Jazz. Happy holidays to one and all. You're listening to Spectrum on 105.9 WJZW, WBZS, and WZHF. We were just listening to uh, Bobby Caldwell and Jenny from uh, Keith Kilgo's latest uh, Mood for Love. Keith, again, where can we see you in concert around town? Uh, well, actually, believe it or not, I'm, 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 I'm working on a concert for the uh, World Wildlife Fund. Uh, I'm an advocate for saving the animals and the trees and the flowers and the plants and the planet. And I've always wanted to contribute to that organization. And, of course, you know, you send in your donations, but I'd like to do something a little more. So I've been talking with some people there about sponsoring a concert in 97 uh, where then the proceeds would go to the World Wildlife Fund. So uh, that's one thing that, that's on the agenda in the immediate area. That sounds great. Good luck with that. Thank you. Gary, Michael, Keith, thank you very much for joining us on Spectrum this morning. You're welcome, Thank Tom. you so much, yes. Tom. You're welcome, We're, Tom. Appreciate it. And uh, have a safe trip back to California. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not <laughs> worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And you will come back and uh, visit us again, I hope. We're not going to oh. leave. We're staying. Yeah. Camping out. We're, We're going to sleep here in, in the room. Yeah, right right here in this. This, yeah, this is a nice chair. Nice floor. area, it's right? It's warm in here. <laughs> you know, warm. You know? so Just got I coffee. need a pillow or two. Yeah. Got a coffee yeah. machine. There's a candy machine out there. We'll be fine. No yeah. problem. See you, Tom. Before Bye. we wrap up, would you like to add anything in conclusion? Boy, could we ever do that. Go out and <coughs> buy our CD. Yes. It's called Quicksilver 96 Shapeshifter. Go out and buy Keith's yeah. Kilgo's CD. Mood for yeah. love. Mood, Mood for love. love. Mood, Mood for, for love. love. Yeah. We need, Mood we for need, love. Gary needs to, needs to finish up his hot rod. I got to get my truck painted. And I want to go fishing. And uh, there, see? <laughs> yeah. So, bye. We're going to go fishing with CDs. him. CDs. They have goals, ladies and gentlemen. We do have <laughs> goals. Yes. That's it for this week's edition of Spectrum. I'm Thomas Grooms. Have a good week and join us again next Sunday morning for another edition of Spectrum on 105.9 WJZW Woodbridge, Washington, WBZS Alexandria, Washington, and WZHF Arlington, Washington. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.